Please welcome Dr. Eliezer Gonzalez. Okay. This is an all singing, all dancing PowerPoint uh, presentation with video and audio, so let's hope it all works well. I'm going to count down from number 10 to number 1 of the, of the, the greatest miracles that I think have happened in, in Good News Unlimited over the last 12 months. I want to tell you that you may not agree with this list. It's my list. They're things that have impacted me. Uh, in fact, I, I, it was very hard for me to uh, limit these to, to only 10. So here we are. First, uh, first of all, number 10 is that Good News Unlimited is still here. Why? Because uh, we are running at a substantial deficit every month for the sake of the gospel. If we have talents, like in the parable, we're not going to hide them in the ground. We're going to uh, invest them in, in the work of the gospel, straight back into the, the kingdom of God. And uh, while we can, we will do as much as we can with what we have. This doesn't mean that Good News Unlimited doesn't have a, a board that does the proper and diligent thing. Of, of course we do. Uh, we monitor things very carefully and, and you know, sadly and heartbreakingly we even say no to many opportunities to, to share the gospel simply because, of, uh, because the needs are so great. And, and we, although we punch, by the grace of God, way above our weight as a Christian ministry, uh, we're still actually, in terms of resources, people resources, uh, quite a small ministry. Number nine, um, see, I'm counting back to number one, the top one. Number one, nine is that I survived together with my son Benjamin, MH17, by the grace of God. We were on MH17, but not the one that was shot down. We were on MH17 two days earlier. Why weren't we on the one that was shot down? Because uh, God inspired my son to want to go bicycle riding in Amsterdam. And so we spent some extra time. Des says, good, I say praise the Lord, hallelujah. Um, but I'm glad to be, still be here, and I'm glad that God can still use me. He has a, he has a purpose for, uh, well, for my son and I. Number eight is uh, baptisms in Brussels against all odds. I haven't shared this story, and I have to be really brief because there's ten of them. Uh, but the, uh, the crowd in Brussels was really small. And um, there are only a, a few non-Christians. And I wasn't, uh, that this was this year in our meetings this year, I was quite discouraged and I wasn't making strong calls for baptism. I'm, I'm usually going for it. You know, the, the kingdom of God, this is not, you know, no, no reason to be timid. But there, there weren't many people there and, and I was feeling, anyway, not my usual self, I wasn't calling people strongly for, for baptism. But Pastor David Kuyumba rebuked me I love that man of God. He's rebuked me several times. He tells me, no, I haven't rebuked you. I haven't rebuked you, but he has. And, and he told a, he's told a story of when he were, uh, of a pastor was preaching in, uh, in a church in Africa. He, he did a, a big crusade. And uh, only one pan man came to the front, but everyone knew that he was the, he was the crazy man. He was the only person who, who wanted to be baptized. And uh, no, one, no one else was baptized. About three weeks later, four weeks later, he was preaching in his church, that's the pastor, when a big bus pulled up outside the church and all these people piled out with, uh, with plastic bags, with towels and a change of clothes in the, in the bags. And, uh, and this was in the middle of when they were having the church service. So the pastor comes in and says, what's going on? And they said to him, are you the pastor that did that evangelistic crusade? Uh, in, here in this, in this church? And he said, yes, I am. He said, well, that crazy man who, who wanted to be baptized, he's the, he's the famous crazy man in our town. And for three weeks, he's been standing in the middle of the town square and just repeating everything that he heard you say. And all of us said, we know he's crazy, but we know that Jesus Christ isn't. And all of us want to be baptized. And so I was encouraged to keep... to, to uh, uh, to, to make a call for baptism on the last day, I knew that there were that there were only um, there were only two people, you know, who'd been coming who weren't Christian. Both of them were baptized. For me, that was that was an important rebuke from God. The global impact of Jesus only. Well, this is more the sort of thing you might want to hear. Um, 
This is uh, Jesus only in uh, Finnish there on, on your left. I think that's our most... No, that's our second most recent, tr recent translation. Yesu Wenyinye, Jesus only in Kenya Rwanda, uh, the language of Rwanda, and in, on your right is Telugu, that's the language of southern India, of Andhra Pradesh, Pastor Joseph's language, where this book is now translated into, I think, nine different languages. Uh, the impact, particularly in Africa, of this book is just incredible. I can't attribute it anything other than to the working of the, the Spirit of God. Little did, did Des know when he wrote it, did Richie Way know when he uh, edited and simplified it uh, a little bit. What, you know, how many thousands of people would come to the Lord through, uh, through these books. And, and may I say that these translations, almost all of them, or bar, bar one, have all been translated by volunteers, people in those countries who, are just, who just need to have this book. Number six is Deepak the Mute Evangelist. I could give you, uh, since there's top ten miracles, uh, I, you know, I haven't, I, ha I don't come from a faith tradition where we emphasize healing miracles necessarily. You know, you know what I mean. Um, I could, in these top ten miracles, I could mention real healing miracles that I've been uh, a witness to as part of Good News Unlimited and even, you know, involved with in some way. But, these, are, I, these ones that I'm mentioning have impacted me even more. Uh, Duncan and I met Deepak, uh, who is the young man in the striped uh, red and white shirt there, and his father. His father has his arm around him. Um, they're in Andhra Pradesh with Pastor Joseph. Pastor Joseph is on your far right, and, and there's a strange-looking man on your left there. Um, he's, he's just crashing the photo. What's he doing there? Um, I just put these photos with me in them to prove I was actually there. One thing about Good News Unlimited, we do not send funds. Uh, we do not ask for support for, for, for projects unless, unless I'm absolutely certain that they are legitimate. And I have usually visited most of the people involved and, and, uh, and, and, and can vouch for their authenticity to the, the best of my ability. So it's important that I'm there. Anyway, Deepak was uh, born mute. He developed a, a great, uh, a very serious illness as a child. His parents promised him for the work of the gospel. And since he was small, and he, if, that was if God would spare his life, his life was spared. And since that time, Deepak's only desire has been to share the gospel. He's still mute. His dream, his prayer every day is that one day he will share the gospel with his tongue. Until that day, he serves and preaches the gospel with his life. He travels days on end to any Christian meeting that he hears of. He sleeps um, beside houses, beside the walls of houses at night. He doesn't sleep for, uh, eat for days at a time just to get to those meetings. And when he gets there, he serves the people. He gives them cups of water. Duncan and I saw him doing this at, at our meetings. He gives them cups of water. He serves the, the, the untouchables, the women, you know, whoever is there. He's the first one there. He sets out the chairs. He packs them up because that's all that he can do. And we published his magazine on, uh, on social media. Uh, sorry, we published his story on social media. You know, there are so many, there are so many needs and uh, we can only help with so many. I have to make very tough calls. Um, and we didn't have a, 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 we weren't asking for support for Deepak, but uh, one person who saw that story is now paying for all of his medical bills. He has ongoing medical needs. Um, this person is also paying so that uh, Deepak and his father and mother can have proper food because they, they are literally starving most of the time. And they are also, um, they've also paid for a bicycle for Deepak and for his father so they can go together to the gospel meetings. And, uh, and that one was, was unsolicited for me and how this has transformed this young man's life and given him real hope. Uh, it, it is a tremendous, tremendous miracle. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, uh, they're also uh, paying for him to be able to go to the, the school for the deaf so he can finish his schooling and, and he can become a, a pastor um, for when God heals him from his muteness. 
he believes God will heal him. And uh, this, is, this is just one miracle that he has witnessed as a foretaste of good things that God has for him. So that was wonderful. Number five. Our inspirational volunteers, this is where I get to do my Emmy Award uh, speech, you know, and I would like to thank um, all the, but seriously, Good News Unlimited around the world is an organisation that is, is, is really run by volunteers. I'm the only uh, professional paid person, I'm the only employee that Good News Unlimited has. We do have contractors to do uh, some professional services for us, but the ministry is being fully delivered, apart from myself, through unpaid volunteers. Here you see, uh, this is David, uh, Pastor David Kayumba in Uganda. Now he and his, uh, his beautiful family, his wife and his young child, uh, live in, in Brussels. And they live there because, in effect, they, they too are refugees from, uh, from Uganda and from Rwanda. There they have a, a very small income, only, only one income, because uh, Pastor David's wife works. Uh, live in, in Brussels. And, and yet and they know, live he there will, because, he in will effect, not they, accept they too are refugees the smallest honorarium from, from, uh, Good from News Uganda Unlimited. and from right now, Rwanda. As there we, they uh, have a, a very speak, small income, only, only one income, because... Okay, right now as, as we speak, Pastor David Kuyumba is on a one-month missionary trip to, to Africa. He's, during the next 12 months, he's going to be doing at least three of these. Uh, where he's left his family in Brussels and uh, he's preparing the way for uh, us to return, for me to return um, and, uh, and have a, uh, a big reaping uh, missionary trip next year around October, November. But like, just like David is uh, Pastor Joseph Usala, entirely volunteers. You know, his wife also works and they live off that income and even from that, must, much of his ministry is funded from his own very small income. I want to remember our, our team of presenters, volunteers. They're professional, but they're volunteers, entirely unpaid. You know, our board... Uh, God is really doing an incredible thing uh, through, through people who, who love the gospel. There are many people who have been listening to Des and the message of righteousness by faith and God has turned on the switch, the go, pressed the go button and said, now it's time to share it. Enough of being students. And not only here, not only our presenting team here, but people around the world whom we didn't even know of before who... Uh, who have known of, of Dr. Desmond Ford and of Good News Unlimited for years but have never con connected with us. So, Hello, GNU family. This is, Pastor this David, is David speaking from Uganda. I'm in Uganda on a GNU mission, and this mission has taken me to several places, but because of the limited time, I'm going to just sing out a few uh, places. Uh, let me begin with the, the Uganda Prison Ministry. We... Through Brother Balwana, who has been a friend to the in charge of Chigo Prison. Chigo Prison is a maximum prison where you find hardcore criminals. Uh, we have been, Jenny has been allowed to enter into this prison to share the gospel with the prisoners. And uh, this work is still ongoing. Several of the prisoners have signed to Christ. We are looking for modalities of uh, having them baptized. Uh, it's not always easy to have prisoners baptized in these prisons since Uganda prisons don't have a specific religious program designed for prisoners. But this is uh, happening and we are hoping this will change things. Uh, now, uh, the prisoners are very happy in a way that I can't explain because you can see the tears of joy as they begin to get hope beyond life in prison because of what the gospel can do. They are so grateful to GNU for, the, for what they call the best gift they have received since the time they have had several preachers coming to them. This book, Jesus Only, is a big blessing to these people. And they are very grateful. This has been echoed by the prison authorities 
who are so grateful for this book and they have actually requested us that we plan a meeting in December that is targeting the prison authorities and prison officers. And this we have agreed with Pastor Marwana that he will help us run this meeting in December. The gospel is producing tears of joy and this in itself is humbling. Well, let me highlight a, a few things from also Western Uganda where we are currently doing work among the soldiers who fled, fled from the Congo conflict and were housed in the military barracks. These soldiers are 1,500 in number and we have a few of them who are Christians and because of these few Christians, we have been able to enter this, this camp and we have spoken to several. Some of them have received Jesus Christ and many of them are calling and requesting for books because we had a few books in Rwanda. And so I had to request Sister Emma from Rwanda to send me some books uh, in Rwanda, which have already arrived in Uganda. And I intend to travel to Western Uganda tomorrow after my sermon in the prison. We'll have the full day Sunday and Monday with with the, uh, these soldiers. Thanks to Moses, Moses has had a contact with these people and that's how we are able to, to get to these soldiers. This work, this work is instead of a blessing because we are beginning to see what the gospel can do. Gospel, the gospel breaks down the walls. Uh, we have met several walls of opposition, but the gospel has been breaking them down and we have had a breakthrough to individuals and communities which were suffering from restrictions. But the gospel is breaking down every wall. And thanks to GNU through this work of the book Jesus Only. Pray for us and continue doing what you are doing. Ugandan prisons are some of the toughest prisons in the world. Christian ministry is generally not allowed there, so I've had to write many letters to allow them in. Um, if someone wants a worthy cause, uh, the Congolese soldiers have asked for 100 Bibles. That's 750 Australian dollars, uh, which we're not providing at the moment. But if someone would like to support that project specifically, there will be more tears of joy if these people can get Bibles. In September, Good News Unlimited partnered with African Evangelistic Enterprise uh, in, in Uganda in a, on a big multi-site uh, gospel crusades. Uh, I know crusade's not a nice word in, in the West with its connotations, but over there they like that word. And uh, uh, we provided Jesus-only books. We provided the Good News Unlimited Choir, uh, which does exist, by the way. It is a thing. It's a wonderful thing too, very talented thing. Um, beautiful young people, all teenagers. And more than 16,000 people, almost 17,000 people accepted Jesus Christ as a result of, of that, uh, that missionary uh, crusade. And so we, I was really humbled to be, uh, to be a partners in, in that. Number three is the miraculous establishment of the Good News Children's Center. Usually Good News Unlimited doesn't do orphanages and things like that. But uh, the Holy Spirit led Pastor Joseph to a village of untouchables where the, the, the people were so poor that uh, the, the, the children caught and ate rats and snakes and that's what they lived off at times. They didn't go to school and they were just r running wild through the streets. And he established uh, the Good News Children's Care Centre where he brings them together. He helps them with their schooling. He feeds them. He teaches them the gospel. He even puts the crams them all into his little van, I don't know how, and takes them to his evangelistic meetings. And, you, and the children become greeters and they serve the people. And the children are starting to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Some of the parents are as well. And, and the, the whole village has been transformed because of these children and the impact on, on the families. Uh, so much so that one of the village elders... Uh, has donated, he's a Hindu, has donated uh, a, a block of land to Pastor Joseph so that, um, so that a proper children's care centre can be built there. At the moment, Good News Unlimited is supporting Pastor Joseph. Uh, and one of the ways that we support that is we, we're paying a, s a small rent every month. 
Uh, it is it is not a large amount being India. However, it will be much better if he can have his own premises. Uh, it's been one miracle after another. Duncan and I were there recently. Our hearts were totally touched by by this this initiative as something that was worthy for GNU to support, and the boards also saw light in that. I have a little video now of uh, Pastor Joseph just reflecting on the last uh, 12 months of, of his ministry in India. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone. I am Pastor Joseph from India, Andhra Pradesh. I have been doing ministry here in India from 2012. Through GNU, I have met Pastor Eljazer Gonzalez in 2013. When I met Pastor Eljazer Gonzalez on computer, my whole life has been changed and my ministry has been changed. It is because of GNU, I have been doing great works here in India. And through GNU, I have given more than 500 holy bibles to the poor people who do not have since years though they have christians though they believe jesus christ but due to their poor conditions they don't have the holy bibles because of that gnu has been sponsored more than 500 holy bibles and i have been spreading the word of god now more than 10 villages and my future plans are to spread the good news all over the Andhra Pradesh through TV channel and we have been praying for the special team good news to all team members to have a one team to go to towns cities and villages to spread the word of God with a powerful word so Please pray for it. And we, I have been doing this ministry in every month in various villages and I have opened two more centers to spread the word of God. And so because of GNU, I have achieved a lot through my ministry here in India. And every year the ministry has been growing. In 2012, I have started this ministry only a interior village with a, a 10 people. Now, I have been preaching this word of God more than 500 people in every month by connecting in various places. So, this ministry has been growing every year by year. In 2014, Dr. Elzezar Gondalaga and his son Benjamin has visited by his visit, my ministry has been blessed and the GNA ministry has been also growing here in India by spreading the word of God through Pravachan channel. By preaching the Pravachan channel every week one message, this message has been reaching more than 800,000 people and they have been getting blessed and they have been getting the word of God, word of God. So, because of this GNU, I am now today, I stand before you. And every year, many people have been accepting. Every year, 20 people. And this year, more than 100 people have been accepted. And GNU has been sponsored the gospel evangelism every three months. So, this gospel evangelism, more than 20 people, 30 people have been accepting. And 2015, this last July, Last June, that Elzezer Gonzalaga and Duncan would have come to the India. And it is more blessing and many people are very, very happy. It is the first time to see the foreigners in India. And many people have accepted and many people are healed. And it is also the Jesus only book which was translated into English. This book by giving to many people accepting Jesus Christ. And they don't know about Jesus Christ and they don't know gospel and through this book they are coming to know about Jesus Christ. So Jian is the one which has been blessing me, my ministry to spread the word of God all over the India. So I am very much thankful to GNU and the sponsors and supporters and the 
board members and the team members, everyone. So please pray for me and my ministry here in India. Thank you very, very much. One thing about Pastor Joseph, what he says, he does. So, uh, number two miracle, we're getting close to number one, is the audience of the unlimited TV show in Kenya explodes tenfold. This happened about uh, five or six months ago uh, when the uh, owners of the radio of the television station we were on, which was only which only covered the uh, uh, the city of Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, uh, made some changes to their, their television network, and they decided our show was too good to just be restricted to Nairobi alone. So for the same price we were paying, uh, even though it should have cost tenfold. Uh, our show is now broadcast to the entire country of Kenya and reaching 10 times more people than it was before. This was something that I had wanted to do but was not affordable for Good News Unlimited. But uh, what negotiation couldn't fix? God could. Now the number one miracle that's happened in GNU in the last uh, 12 months. Well, and uh, this is the totally miraculous Jesus Only radio program in Rwanda. You should be receiving your magazine soon if you haven't already. Emma is on the cover. Uh, that's Evangelist Emma in, uh, in, in Africa. And there's a box of magazines out at the back if you uh, would like to pick one up. Everything about how this radio program commenced is miraculous. Emma's story is real, uh, miraculous. Uh, how she was uh, raped. Um, by the Hutu in the uh, Rwandan genocide, um, left pregnant as a result, uh, how her family were massacred um, in the Rwandan genocide, and then how she herself came to the Lord, and, and even how Des's book, Jesus Only, was instrumental in that. How she be became convicted that God was calling her to work for the Rwandan people, and as a result, she came to meet with uh, Duncan and, and with me in Kampala when we were there in, in July. And she said, I have to come and meet you because God wants, God is calling me to work for him. And she told us all her testimony. I was overwhelmed. And at the end of it, I said, well, what do you do, Emma? She said, well, I'm a broadcaster on national radio in Rwanda. And I said, well, does God have a deal for you? And uh, so, please, you have to read her story uh, in the magazine her testimony will be up uh, as a video on, on our website and on YouTube soon. Um, this radio station, uh, comment, uh, this radio program commenced two weeks ago. It's being broadcast weekly. And uh, the station management are telling us that there's two million people every week watching this program. It's uh, 20 minutes of preaching, 20 minutes of talkback, and the people are saying, why can't you be on more than just once a week? Well, um, we're doing pretty well uh, once a week at this stage, and we're really praising God. I want you to uh, just listen to Emma herself uh, talk about uh, her ministry. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'm Emma Owingarire, an evangelist and representative of Good News Unlimited in Rwanda. Good News Unlimited in Rwanda is doing a lot of work in spreading the word of God and has achieved a lot. Good News Unlimited is reaching Rwanda through Jesus Only books. As you know, I have received 2,300 Jesus Only books, which means 500 in English, and 1,800 books in Kenya, Rwanda. On 22nd September 2015, Good News Unlimited signed a contract with Amazing Grace Christian Radio for once a week radio program. The first Good News Unlimited show started on 7th October 2015 with the topic, Jesus the God Man. Good News Unlimited provided brand new computer, laptop, and internet connection paid every month for preparation of weekly sermons, 
downloading and loading Good News Unlimited audios and videos recorded. We hope for the future to have Rwanda Good News Unlimited office to be able to proceed with Good News Unlimited registration in Rwanda. We hope for the future to have transport means to help distribute Jesus only books and public preaching in different churches and ministries. We hope for the future to have Good News Unlimited Gospel Training Center for the word to spread fast and effectively. I praise the Lord Jesus Christ for divine connection with Good News Unlimited, and I'm sending my special thanks to Good News Unlimited board and Good News Unlimited supporters. May the Almighty God bless you. Amen. You have to remember English is not these, uh, these folks' first language, so they're doing very well. So what can we say? Thus far, the Lord has indeed helped Good News Unlimited. And our response has to be, just like Emma's, would be, hallelujah, and praise the Lord. And so let us be humbled and continue doing what these people ask us to continue doing, to be sharing the gospel and, and not, they say, don't be tired in sharing the gospel. Um, keep on doing it because we need the message that God is offering. So thank you very much. To help you understand God's word in a whole new way, go to goodnewsunlimited.com. You can sign up there to get your free devotional delivered to you each day. been paid for by the partners and friends of Good News Unlimited. Word spreads fast.